Jesus some praise this morning. Man, I am so glad that you are at church today. Stay standing, stay standing. Let me just say this. We want to welcome all of our locations. We're one church in seven locations that are joining us right now. My name is Aaron Burke, and if I haven't met you, I'm so glad you're at church. And let me just say this. There's, there's a special group. They've already been honored, but I'm going to honor them one more time. And it's our guests that are with us today. And I just want you to know it's a big deal that you're with us. We've been praying for you all week long, whether you're watching us online or you're here in person at one of our campuses. We want you to know we're excited that you're there. And if you're church shopping, the church shopping's over. You found your home. Get connected. Come on, ready to give it up for our guests one more time. All right, and one more thing before we sit down. I don't get to, to honor this group very often, but I just think it's appropriate. I was sitting in worship today just overwhelmed by how good God is. And then secondly, overwhelmed by how incredible our Radiant Worship teams are. So uh, let me just say this, and this isn't just South Tampa, at all of our locations, they're, they're, the stages are filled with incredible musicians and singers and sound technicians and production team and worship leaders. And we just think you guys are doing an amazing job. They, they get up, some of them are there at 6 a.m. setting up these stages, serving so faithfully. Can we honor our Radiant Worship kids? We love you guys. We love y'all at all of those campuses. Awesome. Best in the nation. All right. You can be seated. You can be seated. I'm so glad that you're here today. And we are starting a brand new series today called Overdue. Overdue. And we are going to talk all about getting your finances healthy and getting them in order. Uh, we are in a series, in a season as a church where we are talking about health. And so there's something about getting you healthy. We're talking about getting you spiritually healthy in January. And then in February, we're talking about getting you relationally healthy. And in March, we're going to talk about your financial health. And so we're going to have a good time with that. But I do want to just give a quick shout out because right now, I know my wife is watching this message. And she is leading a team of uh, missionaries, of, of Radiant Church um, medical missions trip right now happening in Kenya, and I think the team is watching. I have a little picture of Katie. They sent this, look at my beautiful wife. Isn't she the best? Right there serving with a medical team, and so we love you. We love that team. Thank you guys for being the hands and feet of Jesus. This, they went to an infant rescue center and taking care of kids and kids with special needs, and they're just being Jesus to those people. I love our mission trips that are going out all over, and so it's an awesome time. Uh, Thank you guys for, for doing that. Well, we're going we're gonna to dive in to getting you guys financially healthy and, and talk all about money. We don't shy away from money. Money is a stressor in all of our life. And, and when life is good, man, you got some money. Life is good, man. It's great. And then when you're struggling and finances are tight, how many know there ain't no stress like financial stress? And so we're going to help you overcome that. And so I, I know that we're in a room of people in all of our locations where we can be honest together. So let's just look backwards. We know it's not in the last year, but let's look maybe in your 20s, your teens. How many made a stupid financial decision at least once in their life? Come on. And if your hand's not raised, you're sitting next to a liar, by the way. We've all made some stupid financial decisions. I remember in my early 20s, I wanted to make some extra money. I was in, you know, starting out in ministry and then didn't have any finances. And so I thought I would buy and sell cars. And so I found this, this Audi convertible, this car, and this guy was like giving it away. And so I went, I was like, well, is there anything wrong with it? He goes, oh yeah, it just needs a new engine. That's all you got to do, just a new engine. And I said, I said, well, I'm a dude. I can take care of that. I mean, how hard can it be to put an engine in a car? It's very tough to put an engine in a car. And I remember I spent months and months and months. I found this guy on Craigslist, and he said he could repair cars, but he was also a major alcoholic. And so it was really tough. We worked for a year on this Audi. Finally got the engine in, got it all together. The car never cranked one time. I ended up losing thousands and thousands of dollars on that car. I was so frustrated. It was a stupid financial decision. Then Katie and I got married, and you'll hear a little bit of our story in a little bit where we, we were working hard on getting out of debt, but, but my wife wanted to have a child, and, and I wasn't quite ready for it. So what do you do when you want to have a kid, but you're not ready for it, is you get a dog. And so let me show you our stupid financial decision. This is it right here. This is like a few months into getting married. We got this thing. And you can look at it and go, oh, that's cute. It ain't cute. Let me just tell you about this dog because it costs so much money and they never showed us what the parents looked like. And I always thought it was weird. Like, why aren't you showing us what the parents look like? 
But the fact is, is, let me just give some wisdom. You don't buy a dog by how cute the puppy is. Can I just help you today? Because let me tell you, that thing grew up to be the ugliest, most demonic, non-trained dog in the entire world. When we got to Tampa, like, we could not afford to take care of this dog anymore. It was such a nuisance. And so y'all, y'all are always mad at me for, for, for making fun of cats. Today, I'm just, I'm hitting on dogs for a little bit. Let me just say, let me tell you, that dog, we were so excited. We found someone that would buy it. And so we sold that dog so fast. You know, the dog's off to a better place, hopefully, and maybe even off to eternity. That would be awesome. It's not in heaven. I promise you that. It's not in heaven. There's no way that dog went to heaven. So, so you just realize you always make some stupid financial decisions. Now, if you're, if you're upset, you feel a little shamed that you've made some dumb financial decisions, let me just tell you, in comparison, you've never made one as big as Ronald Wayne. Ronald Wayne, this guy right here, you might not even know who he is, but anytime you feel bad about your financial decisions, just put it in comparison and realize I've never made a financial decision as bad as he made. Now, here's the, the, the back side of the story, is that Ronald Wayne actually was one of the three founders of a small company called Apple. Apple. And in 1976, February the 12th to be exact, he decided to get together with the other two uh, founders, Steve Jobs and Steve Woz- uh, Woz- Wozniak, and, um, and he decided to sit down and, and say, you know what, I want out. I don't think this company's going anywhere. And he took his 10% share of Apple and sold it to them for $800. Now, to hold that into comparison, if that was still around today, his 10% share, he would be worth $200 billion right now. So just understand, there's been people that have made worse financial decisions than you have made. I'm going to bring a message today. To encourage some people. Some of you guys are going to be so frustrated that you didn't hear this message in your 40s, 30s, and 20s. So my encouragement for you is fix what you can fix and then take the message and share it with somebody in their teens and 20s so that they can do things right. And here's the title of today's message. I want you to take out those notes. We're going to take a lot of notes today. And I'm going to talk to you for a little bit about this idea to act your wage. Act your wage. If I could challenge you this week when it comes to your finances, we live in a culture where we spend, 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 and I'm going to challenge you, and it's going to be a little bit tense in here. I might step on a little bit of toes at all these locations, but let me encourage you to act your wage because I don't really think you have an income problem. People are making more money than they've ever made before. I went to McDonald's the other day. Don't hate on me. I'm human. I go to McDonald's. And I went to McDonald's the other day, and I was, while I was in the drive through line, they had the big poster for, you know, uh, now hiring. And it's starting, starting rate, $15 an hour, sign-on bonus, $200. I'm sitting there going, $200? I worked at McDonald's 20 years ago. I remember it was $475 was starting rate, and your sign-on bonus was the shirt that you were going to wear. That was it. But, but no, we're making more money than ever before. But the problem with it is, is we've never been more financially strapped than we are right now. Let me give you some stats. 95% of married couples argue about money. And some of y'all, it was this morning. It's like, it's all the time. It's the number two reason for divorce right behind infidelity. It, it's everywhere. Uh, the average number of U.S. households living paycheck to paycheck, get this, is 59%. So six out of every 10 people that are sitting in that auditorium where you're sitting are living paycheck to paycheck. Roughly 66% of those surveyed this year do not expect to have enough money to retire at the age of 65. That's the world we live in today. 21% of Americans have no retirement savings. And let's be real. If we were to ask you to raise your hand, that would be a lot of you guys right now. Because there's, there's this idea that it's never going to come. Let's just have fun right now. Let's spin, spin, spin. And I'm going to challenge you to act your wage. 55% of Americans believe they will have to work past the age of 65. The average American, listen to this. This is overwhelming. The average American in their lifetime spends $1.45 for every $1 they've earned. So you got to put that in perspective. We, we live on... 45% more than we actually earn. 
Like we have a major issue. And, the, and, and part of this is, is debt, obviously. And part of the debt that just so many of us have is average student loan debt, which is right now at $32,000 per person. Like you're starting out with a deficit. We got to do something with it. And I think the bigger issue, even bigger than student loan debt, is these little plastic things in your wallet right now. And we're going to talk about them for a little bit. And here's what I found. I found this was shocking. Out of, there's 300 million people that live in our country. But do you know how many credit cards are in America? Right now, the most recent count is active credit cards in America. There's 1.06 billion credit cards in the United States. With interest rates as high as 59.9%. Now, some of you guys are sitting there going, that's crazy. That's, uh, that's you. That's me. That's life. We have four or five of these cards in our pocket right now. We got to do something new. Why do we have this? Why do we have this? Here's why. Proverbs addresses it. It says it this way. One person pretends to be rich, yet has, shout it out loud, nothing. has nothing. And that's the world we live in today, especially with social media. We live in this world where we're trying to impress all these people that we don't even know. So we're trying to you know, look a certain way and we buy a certain clothes and we put on a certain shoe. And I'm walk, running into these people. They're 23, 24 years old. And I'm like, your outfit's more than all of my kids' outfits combined. How in the world? You're like, I know what you make. There's no way. But we live in this world to impress people and live up to some standard and thinking that we've bought into this lie that if we have we will then have joy and if we have then we'll have peace and if we have then we'll have happiness and let me tell you you're being sold a lie you're being sold a lie so the word that God gave me today he brought me to the stage to say this one phrase act your wage Learn how to get on a budget and learn how to eradicate this thing that has gripped so many of our lives called debt. Proverbs 22 says it this way. The rich rule over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Now the word servant is actually a very uh, weak translation right there. So let me give you the actual translation. It actually means a slave. It means you're in bondage. Now, I want you to think of the worst version of slavery, totally controlled, totally without any ability to do what you want to do. That is what debt does. And I see it in people's lives day after day where they want to do something. They, they want to have kids, but they can't afford it. They want to get married, but they can't afford it. They, they want to go on the missions trip, but, but, but Aaron, if you understood my finances, I can't do it. If they want to give towards causes like, you know, helping people in Ukraine, but I just can't right now. I, I want to be able to stay home, but we can't stay home because of the debt that we have in our life. We want to do it, but we are controlled by something else. And I'm trying to help free some people today to go, you are not called to have a master called debt. You're called to live under the master Jesus and live his way in your life. So I want to see you get free from this today. Katie and I, when we got married, we had tens of thousands of dollars in debt between student loans and credit cards. She had a car payment. We had some medical bills. And so we really tried to define some values that we would live our life so that we can walk financially free to do what God's called us to do. And I'll be honest with you, we would have never been able to move where we were from Pensacola to here, selling our house and quitting our jobs and doing what God had called us to do if we were not financially free and worked those few years before to eradicate debt from our life. So this is going to be a message that I believe hopefully will free some people so that they can be free to do what God wants you to do with your life and make a difference in the world. Can I hear an amen? amen. All right, so let me give you three values that I think are biblical values to act your wage. Three biblical values to act your wage. Number one is that you've got to learn how to embrace the value of self-control. Oh, nobody likes to hear about this. You're going to embrace the value of self-control. In other words, we are not going to give ourselves whatever comes to our mind or whatever they're trying to sell us out there because we are people with self-control. 
The Bible says it this way in Proverbs 25. Like a city whose walls are broken down is a man who lacks self-control. Or we could say a woman who lacks self-control. What does a wall do? A wall protects the city. You can't be protected. You're defenseless against what's coming at you because you don't have any kind of self-control. Because we're like children. We're like children. We go, man, if I feel like I need it, I have to have it. Let me just tell you, that's not how the world worked up till about 100 years ago. There's no way that was possible. Let me tell you how it used to work. If you wanted something, let's say 30, 40, 50 years ago, it was crazy. You could not get instant gratification the way you get it these days. Like you wanted some clothes, here's what you would have to do. Take you back old school. You'd have to go and get dressed. And you'd have to get into your car. Some of y'all, your mind are blown. You're like, are you serious? This is how it worked. And you had to drive to these places that used to exist called a mall. All right? And then you had to walk into these malls. And you had to go to multiple different stores. And then you had to try them on. And then if you liked them, you had to go to the counter and you had to pay for them. And you took out this thing called a checkbook. It was crazy. And you had to look at your checkbook and you would see the balance. And you go, oh man, I have this much money in there. And you flip it open. And then you have to write out. Like, there's, a, there's some thinking that went into this. I'm going to pay this much money for this thing. And then you'd have to go to your balance sheet. And you have to write on there how much money is coming out of your account because of this check right there. And the person didn't trust you. They looked at you and said, can I see your ID? And you had to pull out your ID to give them the check. And they wrote all your information like they were going to show up at your house if this check did not work. But that's not how it works today. You go on, you want the clothes, it's one click buy. And some places, it's within four hours, it's delivered to your house. Why? Because we don't have any self-control. We just think, man, if we think it, we want it and we want it now. And we have this crazy idea that it's a sign from God when the ad comes up on your phone. <laughs> well, Aaron, I was driving by a mattress store, and then all of a sudden, a mattress advertisement popped up on my phone. It must have been God. It was not God. It's called geo-tracking. It's an advertisement tool that they need. It's crazy, Aaron. My, my husband and I, we were just talking about taking a vacation. And then we go on and a sandals ad pops up. We have to go in and do an all-inclusive. God said to do it. God's not doing that. These advertisers are smart. But you don't have any self-control. We have to learn how to say this word. And I want you to say it out loud. Ready? It's this word called no. no. Here's what I want you to do. Write it down in your notes. Learn to say no for a little while in order to say yes later in life. Now, this is self-control. I'm going to learn to say no for a little while in order to say yes later in life. And some of you guys are, are so young, and you say yes to every spending thing that you go through, and that's why you're trapped in debt, and you never have money to be generous and to be a blessing to the world around you. Learn to say no for a little while so that we can say yes later in life. Now, let's practice this as a church. Ready? So I'm going to say a statement, and you can say yes or no, okay? So do you really need a $5 cup of coffee every day? No. All right. They're very good. Some of you guys feel convicted because you got the cup of coffee in your hand right now. Let me just tell you, it's not a surprise. Your church has free coffee every single Sunday. So you can save that $5 and give it to Ukraine if you would just learn to say no so that you can say let, yes later in life. Uh, let, let's talk to the ladies. Ladies, do you need to get your nails done twice a week? <laughs> it's controversial. It got weird. It got weird. Can I give you an inside scoop? Okay, this, is, this isn't even my notes. Can I just give you an inside scoop? All right. This is just, just I'm going to be your pastor for a little bit. Ladies. We don't care. We don't care. We're not, we're not talking about that. Us guys are not getting together behind your back going, wow. Did you see her nails? 
Do you think they're real or not? I don't know. <laughs> That's not being discussed. Men, do you need to play golf twice a week? Oh, there's some yeses thrown out in there. <laughs> that meant we had to say no. We have to learn how to say no for a little while. Hey, parents, do your, does your 12-year-old child need an iPhone? No. no. Now, the world would say yes. My daughter's nine, and she's like, well, all my friends have iPhones. Well, your friends' parents all have lots of debt. Your parents have no debt. So we're going to say no. You know what we're going to do? We're going to go on vacation with that $1,000 that they would spend on their iPhone, and we're going to go to Disney instead. So we're going to say no so that we can say yes later. Do you need a brand new car off the lot? No. No, as soon as you drive it off the lot, it depreciates 20% right away. So get one a year or two older. It's, it's one of those things you have to learn to say no. And here's what I've realized. Write it down your notes. If you learn to live like no one else, so that one day you really truly can live like no one else. So you have to live in such a way that I'm going to live different than the world is. I'm going to live different than the systems and the plans of this world. I'm going to break materialism off my life. I'm going to learn to say no because I have self-control in what I buy. Number two, we're going to embrace the value of sacrifice. Of sacrifice. So sacrifice is learning to, you know what, despite the fact that I can have it, I'm going to give it up because there's a greater purpose. This is how we live as Christians. Sacrifice has become this dirty word, and it's not a dirty word, it's a biblical word that we learn to live simply. We live, this, we live by this phrase, Katie and I, that we want to live simply so that others can simply live. So we're going to live in sacrifice. We're going to learn to live in such a way that we embrace the fact that we can't buy what everybody else wants to buy, even though it's popular and, and it's, it's cool and it's in. No, we live in a sacrificial life. Jesus is described this way. He says, we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. He went through sacrifice but he had joy. So we don't walk around all moping, going, oh, I can't buy that. I can't do that. No, we learn to say we are joyful in giving something up because we know what we're living our life for. It's not about our glory. It's about the glory of God. It's not about our fame. It's about the fame of God. So, so just write it down this way. It's a phrase we have lived by for so long here at Radiant is that we give up something we love for something we love even more. Amen. I want you to get that. We give up something we love for something we love even more. So, so I, I love the fact, I remember when Katie and I first got married and we had a lot of debt and I wanted to get debt free, but I also love cars and I love having a nice car and I love the feel of driving a nice car and I like showing up to a place and everybody's like, oh, is that your car? I like that. But what I realized is I gave up what I love and I drove around this run down, beat up car for years. And for years, even into Radiant. I mean, for years, people would come to me like, Pastor, do you need some help? Like, we want to help you out. And I was like, I, I don't care because you know what I gave up? I gave up what I love because you know what I loved more than a nice car? I loved being debt free. I loved having margin. I loved being generous. I loved going on vacation. So I gave up what I love for what I love even more. So you have to make these decisions in your life. So you're gonna, you, some of you guys, you need to give up your five different random streaming services and, and cable that you're buying on the same time. Why? Because you're gonna give up what you love for what you love even more. You know what you love even more than that? Is a debt-free Chris, Christmas. And you're not paying in 2023 for Christmas like you are right now and you're three months past it and you're still trying to make up for the bills because you didn't think ahead in this. What do you love? You love to be a blessing to people around you. So what are you going to do? You're going to give up some other things that you have because you're sacrificial as a Christian, and you're going to give it up. Why? Because I love even more being a blessing to the people around me. So you're a college student. you got your little place, and you're like, well, I love being by myself. But you know what you're going to love even more is graduating without college loans. Without student loans, it's going to be awesome. So you know what you're going to do? for a few years is you're gonna get like five roommates. They're gonna be sleeping on the floor everywhere and you're gonna be on the couch and you're gonna go, oh, this is not fun. But you know what's gonna be awesome when you graduate? Debt free. 
because you're going to give up what you love for what you love even more. It's the life that God's called us to live because here's what we do in our world today is instead of giving it up, we just say, well, we can have that and that too. But you can't. And the only lie that you're believing right now is that it's possible because of these things called credit cards. So let me hit on them for just a little bit. And this is the most random message some of y'all walked into today, but it'll help somebody. So the average credit card balance per family in America, this is from a couple years ago, is here it is. And I put the blank in your notes because I want you to write it down. It's $14,517. Now, how do you get that? You never get a credit card balance by sitting there and going, I need to charge this expense. That's $14,517. No, it's Starbucks, 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 Amazon, 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 Amazon. It's death by a thousand cuts. That's how you get to $14,000. So let me help you understand because you don't know that what you're actually doing. You're buying, you're buying this stuff and you're going, well, I can have this and I can have freedom in my future. You can't. Here's the fact. If you pay the minimum, the minimum payment, which is what the, the baseline is, which is a lot of people do, they go, it's easy because all I pay is I pay the minimum every month. I've never missed a parent payment, Aaron. Let me tell you what that means. If you pay the minimum, which is $217.93 per month on $14,517, that's 18%, which, by the way, 18 is entry level. Some are up to 59%. So they will take you, write it down, 40 years to pay off your debt. 40 years. And, by the way, your debt, your total payment on whatever you just spent for, to get to that $14,000 Totals now, after you paid all the interest, $104,606.40. And can you say, wow? wow? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Because you thought you could have this and have that. No, 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 now you're paying over $100,000 for what cost you fourteen grand. Wow. And you, understand, you, you have to understand, if I was just sacrificial and gave up all this stuff I'm charging, I could have freedom in my future. Yeah. But 40 years down the road, you're going to still pay for this. So let me do the opposite of this, by the way. This is crazy. If instead of spending that $14,500 on crazy stuff, if instead you decided to invest it right now, if you invested it at 12% for 40 years, your total would now be $1,350,820.94. I put the whole blank in every single number in your notes so that you have to pay attention today and write down every single one. Here's why, because I want you to understand, if you gave up what you want, love here, you could love something even more. And you know what I love more than $14,000? $1,350,000. Now, can we take it another step? If you took that minimum payment that you're gonna be paying, $217, and you added it every single month on top of that, your number goes, from 1.3 million to 3 million, $597,615.75. And you know what I love more than $14,000? <laughs> but you know what you have to do to do that? You have to live a sacrificial life. You have to say, I'm willing to, to give up what I love for something I love even more. And, and, and you have to deny yourself some of this desire to spin, spin, spin. And it's a simple word. Act your wage. Act your wage. I'm telling you, what, I'm just, I'm so anti-debt. I know people that own businesses, there's a way to leverage it and do it all. Let me tell you, for the average American, average person, let me tell you, you need to eradicate it from your life. And I am so glad. And I, I'm telling you, I'm not saying this to brag. I'm saying this to brag on us as a church. From the very beginning of our church, we made it a point that we're going to live as a church on way less than we ever bring in. And we're going to do our best to use the best facilities we can have, but without debt. And eight and a half years in, a church of thousands of people, we've been ranked one of the fastest growing churches in America for years and years and years. We're seeing tens of thousands over the last eight years. Lives change for eternity. And by the way, our church has zero debt to God be the glory. Come on, give God some praise for that. Zero debt. 
You go, but there's churches in town that have better facilities. They might, and that's awesome, and I hope one day God gives us a great facility at all of our locations. We're praying for it, but you know what? You know what I love more than buildings? I love outreach, and I love missions, and I love giving, and I love being a blessing, and I love never being financially strapped, so I gave up what I love for something I love even more, and you need to do the same in your life. Can I hear a good amen today, church? Number three, and we'll close it out with this one. you got to embrace the value of planning. Embrace, embrace the value of planning. So many of us get into the financial issues we're in because we just don't think about what we're spending money on. We don't have this thing, and it's crazy. It's called a budget. Like how much is coming in, and where is it going to go this month? And you've got to create a budget. You've got to get a plan. Luke says it this way. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. So I want to buy a house, or I want to get married, or I want to have a child, or I want to start a business. What are you, what are you going to do? Won't you first sit down and, like, make a budget? Yeah. Like, estimate the cost, and then figure out, let me see, do I have enough money for this? Not can I charge enough to get it. Not what is the monthly payment going to be. Do I have the money for this? It'll change your perspective if you learn to look at finances this way. Make a plan. Before you pay for it, pray for it. Some wisdom for somebody in here today. Look at that little wristband that you got at the beginning of the year. Every time you look at it, go pray first. Okay, God, do you really want me to have this? And I'll tell you what he'll say most of the time. No. You don't need it. You don't need it. You don't need it. It's like my kids. My kids, you know, they go, we'll go to Target. That's like what we do for fun. Why? Because we're like suburban Americans. You know, it's just what we do. And they'll go and they'll, they'll go, man, I, I, I want this. They, they find a toy and they're like, Daddy, can I have this toy? I'm like, no, you can't have this toy. But I always wanted this toy. You didn't know that toy existed for a couple of minutes ago. You didn't know. And I, I tell them, I say, so if you want the toy, here's what you got to do. You get an allowance. You got to save some money. Or you can wait for your birthday. Well, when's my birthday? Your birthday's in 10 months. <laughs> All right, I'm going to wait. I'm going to do it. Make a plan. Like, I'm, I'm not going to be just, oh, yeah, 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 just buy it, just buy it, just buy it. No, 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 make a plan. Proverbs says it this way. The plans of the diligent, so you have to, like, stay on a budget, leads to, don't you want that? I want that. I want to have more than I need. But as surely as haste, just swipe it, just charge it, leads to, and that's where you're at. Because you're strapped with debt, and you need to get out of it. Let me just say it this way. You can wander into debt. A lot of you guys have. But you can't wander out of it. You got to make a plan. You got to get out of it. So our church is going to do a couple things for you, and we're going to close this thing out. First of all, if you are strapped, you can't figure out your finances, we want to help you. We have a free seminar that's going to start, and it's going to start next Sunday, and it's going to go Sunday night and Monday night. And we're going to ask you to just jump into it. It's free. It's not a bait and switch. We're not going to sign up for some long program. It's just the practice of getting you on a budget and getting you out of debt. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to pull up that phone, and I want you to scan that QR code right there. And you can jump in. A bunch of our team that leads our Financial Peace University classes are going to be leading this. It's going to help, I'm believing, hundreds and hundreds of families get financially free this year. And you've got to take this plan. Just take your Sunday night, take your Monday night, and it's going to be from 7 to 9, both nights. And it's on Zoom. And the whole goal is that we help get you financially free. And you're going to do some homework. You're going to get out of debt. And we're going to see you walk free so that we can make a difference in the kingdom of God. Y'all good? Y'all still got it? I know a lot of campuses, you're still scanning that QR code. All right, let me give you two action items for today's message, and then we're going to be done. Number one is that you've got to learn to save $1,000 for emergencies right now. Most of the reason that you're in debt is because things have came up other than you're just crazy spending materialism, there's things that have come up that were out of your control. So our first step, and these are Dave Ramsey's baby steps, but let me just give you the first two. The first one is you got to save $1,000. So where are you going to get $1,000? I don't know. you got to figure that out. you got to hustle. Pick up some side gigs. Do whatever you got to do. Deliver, you know, do Uber Eats. Do whatever it takes. you got to get that $1,000, and you got to put that money aside because things happen. The refrigerator breaks. The kid swallows a marble. You know, it's just like crazy stuff. <laughs> And those are real, real things. So you're going to save $1,000 for emergencies. And that's, that's always your first step. You need to start there. And then make that your goal. And number two is that you're going to do the debt snowball. The debt snowball, which has been coined by Dave Ramsey, is a game changer. It's something Katie and I did 
when we told you we had tens of thousands of dollars in debt, this is what we did. And I'm going to show you how to make it happen. So Lainey, help me up here. And I'll just take three minutes, the last three minutes I have with you today. And um, I'm going to show you how this works. Because some of you guys think it's so overwhelming to think of all the debt that you have. But I'll tell you, this will help you right here. So here's what the debt snowball is. The debt snowball is that you take a moment and you write out all your debt. So this is not actually Lainey's debt. This is a, uh, this is a you know, a, a fictional experience. So, so Lainey, we appreciate the fact you don't owe all this money. All right, so, uh, so you're going to write it out. So you have $450 that you owe Lowe's, and that is $450 because you had to have those tools that you have not used one time since then, all right? And then, and then you have $650 that you put on your Target credit card, and that's because while you're pregnant, you went there, you went to buy some, some food because you had the munchies and you're all excited, but then you realized you had to have the top and you had to have that hat and you had to have the shoes, so you bought all that put on the credit card, and then the parents, the, the, the AC went down in the house, your parents helped you out, and so on. So what you're going to do is you're going to write out your debts, and you're going to write out from smallest to most. And then once you do that, you're going to write out what all your minimum payments are. By the way, this is what you're already paying every single month, what you're already paying every single month. So you're going to realize this is what I'm paying every month in debt. And we all have this. You all have different things that are the numbers right here. And what you're going to do is you're going to start the debt snowball, and here's how you start it. You start the debt snowball by finding $200. All right. So you got to find $200. So where do you find $200? I don't know. You got to figure that out. So you're going you're gonna to go and um, you're going to deliver pizzas or you're going to take a side job or you're going to give plasma. I don't know. It's plasma thing. Like do plasma. All right. So just give it, give it and go to another place and tell them you didn't even give it but yet that month and give it again. No, don't do that. Don't do that. It's not safe. So you're going to find a way to make $200, and you need that $200 extra every single month. And I'll promise you, you can find it by deleting it, taking out a couple streaming services and removing Starbucks and removing some things. That's just another. So you're going to find $200 a month, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to take that $200 a month, and you're going to put it on the smallest bill that you have. Smallest bill you have. This is the debt snowball. So you're, going to take, you're not going to take the $200 and divide it all the way down. That's not smart. You're going to take and put it on the, top, the smallest one, and then but guess what? Within two months, Lowe's is paid for and guess what you're going to do? You're going to rip up that card and you're never going to use it again. And then you're now going to have $250 every month. Why? Because you were paying Lowe's 50 and 200 You're going to take that 250 and you're now going to put it right here on your bill for Target. And it's going to be $280 a month that you now have. And you know what you're going to do with the $280 a month? You're going to pay this off in about two and a half months. Guess what? Target's paid for it. Never have to do it again. Then, you see the snowball? Then you're going to take the $280 and you're going to put it right over here, right towards the parents. And the parents are going to say, you know what? We don't care. We don't even think about that. But they're thinking about it. They sit down to Thanksgiving. They're like, so how's that AC? Still working good? Still good? Job's good. You know what they're asking? Where's my money? <laughs> so you're going to remove that awkwardness, and you're going to take that $480. And here's what you're going to do in about four months or so. You're going to pay off that, and you're going to go down and down and down. If, by the way, let me just show you the math. If you only do the minimum payments on this, on the debt snowball, and if you only do the minimum payments, it'll take you 120 months to pay this off. 120 months. If you do the debt snowball the exact same way I just told you to do it, It'll go from 120 months to 21 months, and you'll be debt-free. 21 months. That's a difference of 99 months. So let's take this. Look at this bottom number down here. This is so crucial. If you take this $1,100 right down here, and you now, after you've paid it off in 21 months, and you take that $1,100, and you invest it into the market, let's say an 8% return, that number then goes and it's so crucial how this works. It goes now to where you don't owe money or you're not debt-free in 120 months. Within 120 months, now you have $153,000. Cuz all you did is you did this, you paid it off and then you took that $1100 and start saving. How do you do that? You sacrifice what you love for what you love even more. more. Can I hear a good amen today, church? Thank you, Lainey. You're so great. Here's the word from God. Let's close it out. Proverbs 6, 5. Free yourself. <laughs> That's it. You've gotten strangled by debt. Strangled by this stuff. Free yourself. Like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter. That hunter's Visa, it's MasterCard, American Express, General Motors. They got you. Free yourself. You can do it right yet. Like a bird from the snare of the fowler. 
I want our church to be the most financially healthy church in America. And it starts with you making a decision that I'm going to have some values I live by. Here's my values. Self-control. I'm going to have a value of sacrifice. I'm going to have a value of planning. I'm going to get this thing done. I'm going to pray for two groups of people as I close. The first one is you're financially strapped and you feel it's overwhelming. Let me tell you, God's going to give you a grace. You, can't, you don't have to do this thing on your own. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to pray God give you a grace and a strength and a drive to get this done. But there is a second group, and I want you everybody looking up at me at every location. And it's people, and you're not strapped maybe even financially, maybe you are, but you've got a bigger bondage on your life, and it's the bondage of sin. The Bible says that we are all slaves to sin. We're born slaves to sin. And we can't get out of it. There's no, there's no debt snowball that gets us out of sin. The only thing that can get us out of sin is the sacrifice of Jesus on that cross. So today is your day. How do you get out of the debt of sin? You surrender your life to Christ. You accept his payment for you that he paid on the cross for your sins and for mine. That's what Jesus came to do. So at church, you've heard how to get free of your financial issues. Let me tell you, the deeper issue in your life is the issue of sin. And Jesus brings salvation for our sins. Let me pray for both groups. Right now, with every eye closed, every head bowed. You're in that first group, and you just feel strapped financially. You feel like you can't get out of it. Lord, I pray for a grace to come over them. I pray right now over every single one of them that they would get a strong desire to get free from the bondage of debt and to act their wage. Lord, I pray that you would give them a plan and give them the strength and the discipline to do it. Lord, let them learn to sacrifice for what they love, for what they love even more. We thank you for the stories we're going to hear from this message. The second group, with every eye closed, every head bowed, it's those who are far from God. We want you to know God loves you and has a plan for your life. But because of our sin, sin separates us from God. But Jesus came and died for our sins. He's the solution. Now it's your moment to turn your life over to him. And the Holy Spirit's drawing you right now to Jesus to say, today's my day. I'm going all in. With every eye closed, every head bowed, this is your moment. Simple yet significant decision to give Jesus your life. I'm going to have you respond by throwing that hand up on the count of three and saying, today's my day. Aaron, pray for me. No matter what location you're at, I'm believing God's going to meet you right there. One, two, three. Come on, throw that hand up right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Dozens of people, thank you, thank you. Those at Brandon, those in Clearwater and St. Pete, all of our campuses. Why don't we all pray this prayer out loud together. Say, dear Jesus, today I give you my heart. I give you my life. I give you my sin. Forgive my past my present, and my future. And for the rest of my life, I'm going to follow you. Be my Lord and be my Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody that believes it says, come on, let's celebrate those who just made the best decision ever.